Hi, I'm Beth Krupsack here at the Hopedale Service Center. This week's Eastern Ohio Grazing Council weekly video presentation is a little forage identification video. Uh, if you've been to any of our pasture walks, you know that when there's something that needs identified, it's, it's typically my job to figure it out. I may not always know what it is right off the bat, but I'm usually pretty good at knowing where to look and, and how to figure out what it is. Um, we thought it might be good just to put this little presentation together to help you learn to identify some of the common forages found here in Eastern Ohio pastures. Grasses are probably a little bit more difficult for most people to identify than other groups of forages. Hopefully the next few videos through here will help you a little bit with identifying some of the common pasture grasses here in Ohio. Um, when we talk about grasses, we will talk about whether they're warm season or cool season. Warm season grasses do their best in the hot summertime when temperatures are 80 to 95. Cool season grow best like in the spring and in the fall when temperatures are 65 to 75 degrees. Uh, cool seasons will often slow down or go dormant in like July and August when it gets really hot. Uh, we mostly see cool season grasses here in our pastures. Uh, you can plant warm seasons to be utilized to fill in that gap when the cool seasons are dormant. Uh, the video here really only covers cool season grasses just because that's what you're commonly going to find. Maybe in the future we'll do a video just on warm season grasses. This is orchard grass. Orchard grass is a bunch of grass. You can kind of see it stands out from everything around it. It's growing in this little bunch. It's kind of like a different shade of green than everything around it. Um, it's always like just a slight more blue green than the true green of all the Kentucky bluegrass and everything else around. You can see it has a flat stem. That is the one of the easiest way to identify orchard grass is that flat that it's rolled flat instead of round. This is tall fescue, whether you love it or you hate it. It is a cool season grass. Um, it's a little bit darker green sometimes than other grasses around. It's got these deep ribs in the leaf. And if you run your fingers down the leaf, it kind of catches your skin. The leaves are almost sharp. So that's tall fescue. Oh, it's also a bunch grass like orchard grass, so it grows in clumps. Both Kentucky bluegrass and annual bluegrass are cool season grasses found here in eastern Ohio pastures. Uh, Kentucky bluegrass is a perennial, so it sticks around where annual bluegrass is an annual. It's a winter annual, so it shows up here in the springtime, and then when it's done, it's, it's just kind of gone. So Kentucky will last a lot longer and, and do a lot more for you long term. Um, they're both grasses that will tolerate close grazing. Um, they're a good grass to fill in gaps around, you know, bunch grasses and other species of forbs and legumes. You just wouldn't want a whole field of it because that would kind of indicate that maybe you're overgrazing a bit if you have nothing else growing but Kentucky bluegrass. Kentucky bluegrass and annual bluegrass look a lot alike, but the one way to really tell is to look at a part of the plant called the, the ligule, which you'll find down here where the leaf meets the stem. And in Kentucky bluegrass, there really isn't much there. It's very slight or no ligule at all. And in annual bluegrass, it has a membranous ligule. It's quite large, it's obvious. So that is the easiest way to tell the difference between the two. They both have this boat shaped leaf tip, as they say, shaped like a canoe. So that ligule is the best way to tell the, the two apart. So that is bluegrass. This is brome. Brome's another perennial grass. Um, I see it more often along roadsides than in pastures, but it can be in pasture. One of the things to look for is the 
indentation in a leaf that looks like an M or a W, depending on which direction you're looking at it. But they all have it. There's that little indentation in the leaf. You can see it there too. So, that's broom. This is reed canary grass. It's a grass that you will find in wetter fields, low-lying ground, along creeks. It has an alkaloid in it and it makes it taste bad so the cows don't like to eat it so well. They do sell improved varieties of reed canary grass that you can plant in wetter ground when you don't have other things that will grow there very well. But you kind of have to be cautious because this, this, the normal strain of reed canary grass is pretty invasive and I'd be afraid it might take over a new planting but maybe some people have had some success with it but this is reed canary grass. I don't have a video of perennial ryegrass to share with you. I don't have any at home and haven't had a chance to go someplace that there is some to get a video. Um, it's another cool season bunch grass. It has shiny dark green leaves, kind of like tall fescue, but it's, it's a little bit different and the edges of it are smooth. They're not sharp like the edges of tall fescue leaves. It does not tolerate drought but it does tolerate close grazing and it's not a good grass for stockpiling. Perennial ryegrass is not probably very common in Ohio pastures. It's, you probably don't have it unless you have planted it there yourself. This is velvet grass. It probably is not especially common in the area, but I've seen it several different places and thought it was good to include in this just in case you had it and wondered what the heck it was. Um, it is a Perennial cool season bunch grass. It looks a little bit similar to um, orchard grass when it comes out. It's that same blue green color as orchard grass, but it has a round stem instead of a flat stem like orchard grass. And all the leaves and the stem are covered in a fine hair that's almost furry. I don't know if it's the furriness of the, that the hair on there that makes the livestock avoid it or if it tastes bad, but I know that my cows will eat around it if given the opportunity. Uh, when it comes out in seed, it has like a purplish hue to the seed. Timothy is another um, grass that I don't have a video of. While it's a cool season bunch grass, it comes out a little later than the other grasses. It matures later than the other cool season grasses. So at the time I was out taking these videos, I just hadn't seen any Timothy yet to shoot for you. Um, it, it does not tolerate close grazing, and it's definitely a lot more commonly found in hay fields than in pasture fields, but you will find some Timothy in pastures. Legumes are an important component in a healthy pasture. Legumes are broadleaf plants that are a good source of protein. They add a lot of nutrition to the pasture for your livestock. They also have the ability to fix nitrogen, take nitrogen from the air and turn it into plant available nitrogen. So they are important to have in a diverse pasture. This is red clover. Red clover is usually larger leafed than the white clovers. Um, it grows upright. You can see it's a lot taller than the white clovers. Um, the stem is hairy. You can see that there. When it blooms, it has a reddish purple flower. I'm sure most people recognize red clover when it's in bloom. So this is one of our our legumes. This is white clover. While it looks pretty similar to red clover, it's smaller. The leaves are smaller. It's a shorter height than red clover grows. Um, and if you look at the stems, they're smooth. They're not hairy like red clover. And white clover also grows a little bit differently. You can see here, this is a stolon and it grows right along the top of the soil. And it sends roots down at each node, like each place that a stem comes up off the plant, there's roots going down off of it, but they're all connected. Um, and that's how you can tell white clover from alcite clover. Alcite is a, a white clover, but it's, it's different. It grows more upright. It grows more like red clover, although it doesn't get as big as red clover. 
Um, and Alsike has like a, a white bloom, but often it's tinged with a little bit of pink. But it's a smaller bloom, just like the white clover there. Unless you look for the stolons, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between alsike and white. So I don't have any alsike here at the moment to show you. I haven't come across any yet, but hopefully eventually I'll have a video on that one too. This is alsike clover. It often has a little bit of a pink tinge to the white bloom. Um, it grows tall and upright. You can kind of see that little bit of red clover in the background. It grows tall like red clover where white clover stays a lot closer to the ground um, and it doesn't grow from stolons like white clover. It um, has gray leaves just like all of the rest of the clovers but it doesn't have the water marks that red clover has. Um, red clover has the mark there on the leaf. So this is alcite clover. This is bird's foot trufle another one of our legumes, unlike sweet clover and alfalfa and black medic, it has five leaves instead of three. It gets a bigger yellow flower on it when it blooms. Um, bird's foot is tough to get established, but it tolerates some poorer soil conditions than some of the other legumes will. It is a non-bloating legume, so that's one nice thing about it too. You don't have to worry about bloat. So this is bird's foot tree fall. This is alfalfa, often known as queen of the forages. Um, it has a trifoliate leaf like most of our legumes seem to. Um, unlike sweet clover, it's serrated only at the ends, not all the way around the leaf. And alfalfa will get a purple flower when it blooms. Alfalfa doesn't handle grazing real well, but it will, will survive somewhat. You won't have a full stand of it like you would if you had a hay field of it, but but it, some of it will stick around in, in pastures a little bit. It won't handle close grazing. This is black medic. It's another legume. It looks a little bit like bird's foot, but it's a little smaller. The flower's a little smaller. Um, if you look at the leaves, there's only the three. Um, bird's foot has two other leaves down below the three at the end. Um, it's a good little legume. It's not a super high producing legume, but it's still still a legume, still nutritious, still a good thing to have around. This is sweet clover. It's another legume. Looks a little bit like bird's foot, but not quite the same. It only has, has the three leaves and it's serrated all the way around the edges. Um, it grows it can grow pretty tall and get real stemmy if you let it get too mature. You'll see alongside the roads a lot of times, all tall and crummy looking. Um, it is, the leaves are a lot bigger than like Black Medic and there happens to be Black Medic growing right next to it. So i show you that just for comparison's sake. So this is Sweet Clover. Vetches are legumes that you will find in eastern Ohio pastures. I think probably especially more common in the reclaimed strip mine ground areas of eastern Ohio. Um, there are a few different varieties that I think we see around here. Um, hairy vetch, common vetch, and crown vetch. Hairy and common are both winter annuals. Crown is a perennial, but they all have similar leaves. They're compound leaves with little narrow leaflets all along them. They have purple or pink flowers and they're all kind of showy flowers. They stand out a bit. Uh, they don't tolerate close grazing. Forbs are an important component of a diverse pasture that sometimes may be overlooked. Um, sometimes we just look at them as weeds. Uh, forbs are any herbaceous broadleaf plant that is not woody, so it's not a bush or a tree. They add a lot of diversity. They have a high protein content. The majority of them do. They, some of them are just as high as alfalfa. Um, and forbs can also be very deep rooted and pull up minerals that other forages might not. So they're really good for our soil health. 
Oh, it's just something you don't want to discount in our pasture fields is the presence of forbs. Plantain is one of the forbs that you'll find in our eastern Ohio pastures. This is buckhorn plantain. It has a longer, narrower leaf and it has this, this seed head. When I was growing up, we used to take and wrap the stem around and shoot these at each other. Um, so that's buckhorn plantain. And then there's also broadleaf plantain. It's got a shorter, wider leaf and it has a different type of seed head. It's got little green flowers all the way up the, the seed head that grows up out. Um, of course, there's none, no seed heads for that right now, but they're both good forbs. I do feel like I see the broadleaf a little bit more in compacted areas. And while it's a downside to have a compacted area, it happens, it's reality and you know, Nature's amazing, and I'm sure that because it has a bit of a deeper root, it's probably helping break up some of that compaction, and so it's there for a reason. So these are, are our plantains. If you're looking to add some forbs to increase your diversity in your pastures, forage chicory would be a really great one to use. I know you've probably seen chicory grown alongside of the road. Um, the traditional chicory is it gets real tall and spindly and stemmy. There's not a whole lot of leaf area for livestock to eat where forage chicory has been developed to have a lot more leaf area and be a lot more productive. So it's it's a really good choice. It's a perennial. Um, livestock like it, it tastes good. It it's, contains a lot of nutrition, um, but it's not really great in hay because it takes longer to dry than, than other species. I'm sure most everyone is familiar with the dandelion, but you will find dandelion in pastures. It's an excellent forb. It has that fairly deep taproot that goes down and pulls up some different nutrients than maybe some of our grasses might. So a little dandelion mixed in there is good for diversity. This is curly dock. It's another forb that you'll find in some of our pastures. It's related to burdock, which has a much wider leaf. But these have these narrower leaves with wavy edges. So that's burdock. Well, that wraps up my forage identification presentation. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have questions about anything, feel free to contact us. If you have a plant that stumps you, Feel free to send us some pictures and we will try to help you figure it out. Um, thank you all for sticking with us through these crazy times. We sure miss seeing you at the pasture walks and we really look forward to getting back to that when we're able. Uh, before I go, I want to take a minute. We've got to make sure we thank our sponsors, uh, Farm Credit Mid-America, Kim Davis Insurance Agency, Straight Ace Ranch City, Farmers Exchange, and Circle Elephants. Thank you all and have a great day.